All right, let's get started. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Commenter Events. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Darren, and I'll be your host. But today's topic is how to overcome imposter syndrome in tech. But before we start, I just want to let you all know, if you have questions during the talk, um, feel free to put them in the chat, and we'll get to them during the Q&A section at the end. Um, got a few colleagues here who will be hanging with you all in the chat and writing down your questions. And also, I, would, I see a lot of you have your video on, and we do encourage that, um, if possible. All right, so today, our speaker is um, Rahul. He is a tech lead at Facebook and a lecturer at Stanford University. He also runs a YouTube channel and Slack workspace to help people with tech careers. I think he's going to have lots of helpful experience and insights to share with us. Um, so yeah, without further ado, um, Rahul, I'm going to hand the floor to you now. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Darren. Let me share my screen. And then can I ask Darren, are you able to see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So yeah, thanks so much, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, what I want to spend today talking about is overcoming imposter syndrome. So Darren gave a great intro. I'm Rahul. I'm at Facebook. I also am um, pretty active as a teacher. I teach at Stanford along with, um, you know, I put content out on YouTube and, and LinkedIn and Twitter. So happy to connect with anyone after the event um, for follow-ups or questions if people are interested. Um, so what I want to talk about today is this topic, which is certainly has impacted me. And I think based on the numbers that we have today, it's impacted many of you, um, this idea of imposter syndrome. And so I have maybe 15, 20 minutes of content, and then I'll uh, leave some time at the end for a Q&A. So I want to break down the next 20 minutes into four different sections. First off, let's define what is imposter syndrome. Um, then, you know, how do I think about imposter, imposter syndrome in terms of like uh, a mental framework of how to make sure that it doesn't actually impact me to uh, like beyond what beyond what it normally does? Like, I mean, imposter syndrome is kind of inevitable, and I'll talk more about that. But how can we minimize the impacts of imposter syndrome? And then I want to share some tactical tips, some actual things you can implement today to help you overcome imposter syndrome. And then finally, working within a team. I think for better or for worse, if you're trying to do anything meaningful in software or in any industry, really, you're going to have to work with a team. And so the way you collaborate, the way you build trust with the team is so important for you to find success and for you to overcome imposter syndrome. And so I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about how to work more effectively with the team. So first off, what is imposter syndrome? Um, I love I love this uh, image of this dog. So you know, we have this internal tool called Fabricator, which is used for code review. And so oftentimes what people will do is when they're making a code change and they don't really have a deep understanding of the change they're making, they'll include this image in the code review. They'll say, like, I really have no idea what I'm doing. Please give me feedback. Please tell me how I could improve this. And I love just the authenticity of that. that you know, if you really don't have a great awareness of what is the code doing, you're kind of just copy pasting stuff, you're matching a template. I think it's really valuable just to call that out. And I'll talk more about the benefits of acknowledging imposter syndrome or the benefits of acknowledging that you don't have everything figured out. There's a ton of benefits in terms of trust and getting help if you do that. Um, but what this, is, this picture is really talking about is imposter syndrome, right? So imposter syndrome refers to this feeling that you don't really belong. Or another way of phrasing it is, believing that you're not as competent as people perceive you to be. So basically it just means that you feel like you're a fraud. And I, I can certainly relate to this feeling because um, I went to Stanford. I, had the, I was lucky enough to go to Stanford. And I remember my freshman year, my first year at Stanford, I was able to land an internship. But literally I had taken like two computer science classes. And I felt like the only reason they gave me that internship was because, hey, I was somehow able to get into Stanford and they gave me this internship. But I really had so much anxiety around, will I actually be able to add value to this company given how little I actually know? I really felt like I wasn't equipped to succeed. I, was, I felt like I didn't really know what I was doing. And I think that fear or that fear of judgment really paralyzed me. And that summer, I think, was really, really hard for me because I, 
I felt like I didn't have the support. I didn't really know how to ask for help. And that's what I'm hoping, you know, at the end of these next 15 minutes, a lot of you can have some tools in your toolkit to help overcome that, that paralyzing fear that I felt. And I wanted to call out also that imposter syndrome is a major issue in tech. It's not just in that me or you feel. The majority of people in tech will experience imposter syndrome at least once. So that one study I read through said that around 60% of tech employees experience imposter syndrome. And I would actually say that's fairly low. There was another one that said around 80%. But the fact of the matter is that the majority of people who I've interacted with have felt imposter syndrome in one form or another. And this feeling will often come up through different milestones in your career. So for example, when you switch a job or if you get promoted, these are often the t times when you will most deeply feel imposter syndrome. So when, when things are going well, ironically, that is a time when this fear of judgment, this feeling like you don't belong, that is often when you really um, feel that in a very deep way. Um, even though, you know, you earned that promotion, right? Or you were able to get that job switch. So you should have a bit more confidence. But I think this is something that really does plague many people in tech. 